When I was a kid, my parents used to take me and my sisters camping at the coast of Alaska nearly every summer. We'd spend hours playing in the sand, building these elaborate forts and running through the dunes all day long. But as night would creep on our campsite on the beach, we'd always hear this eerie sound coming from the water, and it always seemed to be growing closer by the minute. It sounded like somebody was throwing something metal around on the rocks, and were now going closer and closer. My parents were always very quick to dismiss it, but the sound continued to get louder and then coming out towards our tent, but would always stop before reaching us. Like I said, my parents were quick to dismiss it as a nightmare, and they were right. It was a nightmare. A living one. It was always an incredibly terrifying experience, one that my sisters and I swear to this day is more than real. One evening, we stepped out because I had to go pee. My parents were fast asleep, and we heard the noise. My sisters and I both looked, and we saw what it was. What was making the noise was this strange creature swimming close to the shore and then surfacing. We saw its head and parts of its fin before it submerged again. The night was getting very dark, so we could just barely see the shape of this thing's body as it moved away from us and out back into the water. We were terrified. Our eyes were wide open. We don't think the creature saw us, and if it did, we think it may have tried to stay hidden. We stayed there and stared at the water where this thing had just appeared from. That summer was my first time ever seeing this strange creature, and also my last. The creature, to my knowledge and my sister's knowledge, never came back that year, or any other year after that. I can't even begin to try explaining what it is that I saw. All I know is that I'll always remember those days on the coast, with a certain fondness, after that strange, terrifying experience. The very next day, my mother told me that it was just a dream, but I knew it wasn't. I had never seen this creature before. I also recognized that it was very large. It had to have at least been six feet tall had it been standing upright. And it appeared to have a tail from what I could tell or make out. I assume it was some sort of sea serpent, but I can't be sure. My sisters say that it kind of reminded them of a cross between a man and a sea serpent type thing. It really scared all of us. I went fishing with my family a few Saturdays ago. It was a beautiful day in July, but I swear that I saw something in the water I don't normally see. It's something that really stood out to me, and I don't usually fish this far out. I wanted to catch some yellow tail. We were about a hundred feet out on the ocean side, three miles from shore. We had just put out our lines down when my brother-in-law began yelling at us that he saw something. He said it looked like a monster or something was coming up for air about 20 yards away from us. When we saw it, we caught a glimpse of what appeared to be this brownish colored fish dinosaur thing. It was going through the water really quick like flying, soaring, and to say it looked prehistoric is an understatement. We were all pretty shocked at what we were seeing. It was definitely a monster. It obviously saw us because it disappeared into the water, never surfacing again. I know many people have seen things like this before, but I'm not sure what it could have been, and I'm still pretty shocked it happened. My guess is that it was possibly some prehistoric fish of some sort. It kind of looked like it would be in the family of sturgeon, but it definitely was not a sturgeon. But it kind of had that look, if you know what I mean. Very ancient looking. It was brown and much larger. Too bad it disappeared too quickly before we can get a good look at it. The ocean is home to all sorts of mysteries, 
So once again, I'm not surprised we saw something we cannot explain. My youngest son, his daughter, and I were staying at a family friend's home on the beach so we could do some crabbing. We even made a fire that evening to cook our crabs while we waited for them to become available. It was late August in San Diego, and there is a very small window of time between twilight and the darkness. Perhaps this is why we saw what we did. Now, I'll go ahead and put a forward on this and say, I don't know if this was a UFO, I don't know what this was, but we saw some sort of interdimensional anomaly. We started to notice that most of the people had left the beach, it was just us, and a couple in their 50s or 60s, standing 150 feet away. As it got darker, we could see them, but they couldn't see us. They were close enough that we heard some of what they were saying to each other. There was nothing unusual at first about their conversation, but it did surprise me a bit when I realized we were talking about the same thing. I mentioned earlier that it was dark, but not completely, and there were no streetlights or anything to illuminate the night sky. I'm trying to paint the picture here, that it was dark, and there was lots of stars out. However, we noticed one area of stars that seemed to be brighter than the rest, and somewhat closer to the horizon than anything else in the sky. The couple also noticed this, judging by their gestures and body reaction, and they even commented about it with each other. Now, we had only been watching for a few moments when we all, my kids, me, and them saw something moving through these brightened stars on what appeared to be a collision course with us, referring to our location at ground level. It emerged from this cluster of stars and into our atmosphere, just above the ocean. I would guess it was about 400 to 500 feet in front of us, but it was difficult to gauge its distance due to how bright it was, almost like seeing a star that is as close to one and further away would be. The object appeared to be oval-shaped and about 30 to 40 feet long. It moved incredibly fast and at first, we thought it was going to crash into the water, but instead, it slowed down and turned upwards towards our position, at which time I realized that I could see through what appeared to be clear or slightly translucent skin. This made me convinced that this wasn't a craft being piloted by humans. There were no visible seams or joints. It was something else entirely, almost like this loose shape but then it began to change. Then it began to take the shape of this strange, eel-looking creature. This astral, ethereal, eel-looking creature. We were all shocked, and its skin reflected the ambient light in the same way that living things underwater often do. It also had lumps in two rows on either side, which appeared like gills, and these gills were bright white, and flared open, similar to how an eel's gills do when agitated, but they were not really moving. This thing didn't have any eyes that I could tell, but it definitely knew we were there, as soon as it slowed down enough so that it didn't appear to be just a bright light. It turned so that we were looking right at its face. I just remember feeling the feeling of weightlessness and awe as I watched this creature or thing, swim, fly, however you would describe this, past us, about a hundred or so feet above our heads. It continued towards the couple in front of us, and then silently flew over them where they remained still, it then stopped moving forward about a hundred feet beyond them, and stayed suspended for another five seconds before shooting straight up into the atmosphere, and then going completely out of sight. A few moments later, the man called out from where he had been standing with his wife, asking if we just saw what we thought we just did. We all agree that we had, and we all consider this the most shocking, terrifying and bizarre UFO experience any one of us could ever go through. At least, that's what I assume this was. 
I still have no answers to what we saw. And if this was some sort of grand group hallucination, I guess that's a reality. What do you think of my story? What could this have been? I've heard stories of UFOs, but never one like this, where an object appears to change shape into an actual living creature like this, that was not only translucent, but appeared to be interdimensional of some kind. Went boating on the Okanagan Lake years ago with my wife and kids, when suddenly the boat stopped. I asked my wife if we were stuck in some kind of sandbar, so I turned around to back up and had a look on the sonar. It showed there was at least water under us. However, as I backed up, you could start to see several large rocks just below the surface, and all of a sudden, my wife let out this ear-piercing scream as she was looking over her shoulder toward the rear of our boat, at which time our two kids began screaming and crying. I looked behind us to see this large dark object, roughly 25 feet long, moving fast through the water, away from shore, away from us. This thing looked like something alive. It had to have been at least 40 feet deep. It was too big to just be a shadow. We were on the surface of the water. I could not swim, and my wife was no accomplished swimmer either. Needless to say, we went back in full throttle. After that day, I have never been back out on any lake or waterway. Actually, to be honest, I am petrified by any body of water. In 1970, me and three friends decided to go camping up north, several miles from Florence, Oregon. It was pretty isolated, except for one other camp a few hundred feet down the beach. We all laid around during the day while the other camp packed up and left. Around 9 p.m., we all went to sleep in our tents, leaving a lantern on for light, since it was a full moon. Around 11 p.m., I woke up to the front of my tent being partially open, and I noticed water dripping. Then, things began to happen very quick. I heard the strange sound and water dripping. Then, this huge head hanging right above over the top of the opening, and all I could see were these black eyes, at least three inches across, flaring flat nostrils, no hair or scales or fur. I couldn't move away. I was terrified and frozen with fear. It stayed there for what seemed like forever, staring at me, before slowly swiping its hand out of the opening and disappearing. When I finally got the nerve to move, I packed up and left. To this day, I can't stand to go near any body of water, assuming this was some sort of strange lake creature. This is the tale of the White Lake Monster. My grandmother lives in Twin Lakes, which lies on LA Route 27. The closest town be St. Martinville. Anyway, one day, my mama was home alone since her sister Beatrix had to work at 3 p.m. on Halloween. My mother decided to take us back, hunting for deer, with a friend. My mom also asked if she could drop me off. We had gotten some candy treats already that day from other relatives coming by our house. I said no because my cousin was trick-or-treating. It wouldn't feel right going without him. And so, she dropped me off around five. A few hours of not finding anything, we decided to head home and go inside, which is when grandmother said she'd seen a big animal swimming in the water. A few nights later, my mom's friend Crystal went back to the lake to check out what it was. She told me grandmother that it might be a cypress lake monster. She also mentioned it might be the Rougarou. The next day, November 1st, I begged my grandmother until finally she gave in. So we took some of her fishing poles with us. and We came across this huge mud hole. It looked like something had been there, 
it was all torn up. But we insisted on going further down the road. And then we see this huge white thing in the water swimming right to the left of us. And we could see its scales. That's just how close it was. Now, Grandma said before that that was a monster. So we waited for it to disappear before running back and telling her. We were shocked. This looked like some sort of long white fish. But never have I seen anything like it before. Sorry, I'm not a good writer but I thought that this sighting was interesting. This occurred on August 11th, 2019. I went to one of my favorite spots in the lake, two and a half miles from the closest residential area. I like coming here. It's quiet and out of the way, but still close enough that I can get back to the shore in five minutes, assuming something goes wrong. I was fishing with a friend, and we were catching plenty of fish, mostly small sunfish, but our biggest catch yet was a large bass. It started getting dark around 7.30pm, so my buddy left, going back to his car, and called it an early night. He had to be at work the next day at 6am. I ended up staying until around 10pm. I was having no luck catching any fish. The lake was a decent size, about 10 square miles roughly, and part of it being very deep, over 100 feet. When I was about to pack up and leave, I saw something clear moving through the water about 200 yards away from me, and that's when I noticed there were hundreds of them, these large, clear creatures swimming around really fast in almost every direction. They were translucent. Kind of like jellyfish, but larger and a lot more fluid movement. They also seem to have this glow. There are also these red-orange shapes going through the water at extremely high speeds, seemingly trying to eat the other ones. It reminded me of some videos I've seen before, so I stayed there watching it for about an hour until I finally got a little too scared and decided to leave. I didn't know what these creatures were, I tried to Google stuff about this lake once I got back home, but nothing came up. It wasn't until two days later that my mind was jogged when some guy on Reddit posted a video of something similar. The monsters looked exactly like the ones I saw. I call them monsters, but really, I think they're just some unknown fish or something. What do you think these might have been? Did anybody else see these? I'm posting here on this thread for now, but if anybody can reply, I would really appreciate that. I was fishing from the banks in Oregon during an evening. This was actually at Sanford Lake. A couple of friends and I were catching cutthroat trout when we noticed something very odd just under the surface on my side of the lake. There was this creature that had a long serpent-like body and large flippers or fins on each side. It kind of reminded us of a flying fish. The head had these weird triangular shapes pointing down to its mouth and didn't appear to have any eyes at all. This fish also had some type of appendages coming off its back, kind of like some fish you would see. Not sure what these were, but they resembled almost tentacles which looked frayed and torn apart. There was no sound produced by this fish, and it did not appear to have gills. This thing was swimming very fast and would be making sharp turns darting back and forth across the lake. Once, this thing partially lunged out of the water, and we got to see a lot of its body. It looked far different, and it made this strange noise. When I say big, this thing was roughly maybe 9 to 10 feet long, and maybe 2 to 3 feet wide. All this happened within 10 minutes time, as if it were looking for food or something. We did finally depart the Sanford Lake, but I am very intrigued by nature, and I spend lots of time outdoors, camping, fishing, boating, hiking, etc. I've seen some odd things in nature, but this was by far the most bizarre. 
I hope I can find out more about it soon. Anybody with any answers, I'd greatly appreciate you posting a reply. This happened to me this summer, around late June, early July. It was right before 4th of July. I live by the St. Clair River, which I've always heard rumors about of a lake monster and other strange thing in it. So it's always been on my bucket list of places to investigate for myself. Also, I guess there is an old lighthouse that is said to have paranormal activity. Let me start off by saying both I work as a career firefighter and I'm a certified EMT. So when I tell you what I saw, please, Trust that I'm not lying, we're just trying to make something up. In fact, my username is anonymous for that reason. I don't want my real name in any part of this connected. Late one night, after fishing on our station, we were all hanging out at one of my friend's houses discussing our days while browsing social media, when some of us started to see a story pop up on our Facebook. This was about a group of hunters had found what they believed to be an unidentified carcass in Lake St. Clair, and that the police were investigating it. So, we're all looking at this post, when one of my other friends, who is a very active duty military, and also has been for quite some time, with the special operations training, he tells us that he knows somebody who was there when it happened. Apparently, his unit was only told it was closed for training exercises while well, it was really to come investigate this thing. Mind you, both he and my other friend have been out on boats before hunting deer season, so they know their way around. So he's telling us that basically these hunters had originally reported seeing something very similar to what they would refer to as a plesiosaur. As it was coming up to their boat, they all freaked out. One guy had the presence of mind to take a picture before this thing went underwater. It sounds pretty crazy, but he's my friend. I'm inclined to believe him. Plus, where we are is not only an old Indian burial ground nearby, but has also been a hot spot for Bigfoot sightings, UFO sightings, and other various phenomena. So, I don't really find it that far-fetched anymore that these things exist. After he told us about what he knew about this creature, one of my other friends says, what if it comes back? we should go investigate. At first, I figured she was just joking. She likes watching cryptid shows and whatnot. But then, she and another friend, the only other female in our group, said to us, we should go out onto the river tonight. And since there's no moon, maybe we can see if we can find it. I tried to tell them that they were crazy. But by this point, they had already talked me into going so... We all decided to meet at my house around midnight after everybody was done with their work fully or responsibilities for the night. Now, these three friends are some of my more adventurous friends. We've even gone ghost hunting before, more so their idea. These three also had gone on a Bigfoot expedition. Of course, they never found any evidence. Needless to say, I was excited about the adventure and the outcome. It was just something fun and different to do. So, about 30 to 45 minutes later, it's now past midnight, and we all finally meet outside, right on the riverbank, and this is where we have our three canoes. This is where we kept all three of our canoes, and with all our fishing gear. These canoes are very expensive. We tie them up to the bank, grab whatever flashlights we can find, and head out on the river with one person in each canoe. I'm not going to lie, we were pretty scared. It wasn't exactly the wisest decision, but I guess we've done crazier things. Plus, I had a friend who was more adventurous than all of us. He was kind of being the leader, or what I like to refer to as the designated driver. But nothing really happened for the first 30 or so minutes, at least that I can remember. We spotted a log floating in the water and we all laughed and joked about how it might be our monster. After several minutes of following it downstream, I turn to look at them and ask if they're still watching it. 
I've lost sight of it since moving further down the river. I wasn't staring or anything, just looking around while waiting for them to answer. That's when both friends I'm riding with shout, Holy crap! As they frantically start paddling back towards where we came from. So naturally, I think something's happened. Somebody must have fell out of their canoe. So immediately, I start paddling forward and then spot what looks like kind of a long but also like a large snake poking up from the water and kind of thrashing around as if trying to stay afloat. I know, I'm probably doing a terrible job explaining this story, but it's hard to make sense of what I saw at first. It happened so quickly, and I only caught a quick glimpse of it before being thrown into confusion or excitement. I don't know what emotion you'd call what I felt. And then, suddenly, the thing had looked like a log went underwater and didn't come back up while my other two friends began yelling, Go, 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 fast! So, I paddle faster downriver, confused as why, what is going on? Why is everybody in such a hurry? When all of a sudden, one friend who's riding with me starts screaming about something, but all I can understand from him was, Brother, he's underwater. So naturally, thinking my other friend has fallen out of his canoe, without the life jacket on or something equally as stupid, I turn back and see that his canoe has completely capsized. He was able to forcefully turn his canoe back over, but somehow, he's soaking wet and he is scared, terrified. I was shocked the way the man was able to uncapsize his own canoe. That alone seemed impossible but he's screaming that something took his canoe down. We needed to go now. Screaming, yelling, that's what all I remember from him. Anyway, I wanted to ask you guys for advice. It sounds like something happened. Something large under the water was trying to take my friend down. Except this was something far different than a fish. When I talk to the same friend now, he has PTSD about it, almost nearly dying. He claims the monster was going to get him, and since when any of us ran off so quickly, the other friends didn't fall into the river. So, for a little bit, we tried getting back to shore, calling, shouting, signaling, but we couldn't really get any response from anybody else around us. We were able to finally make it back to shore, where we were soaking wet and terrified and my poor friend, who had capsized in his own canoe. He was just shaken up and would not talk. When we kind of got him to calm down more, he claimed something large came under his canoe in the river and nearly tipped him over and tried to pull him out. He was scared, still is scared. I'm looking for answers. We have no idea what it was. And do I believe it was a plesiosaur? I don't know. He didn't really give a description of what it was, but something was trying to kill him or eat him or pull him out of that canoe. He was also the one in the very back. I was out on a very small lake on the outskirts of Detroit, hanging with some friends. We decided to go swimming in it while we were young and dumb. Kids tend to do this at this age. I know how ignorant this sounds, but after a long summer day, all you want to do is cool down and be free for a moment. We had been out there for maybe an hour or so, just enjoying each other's company. And that's when we heard someone shouting for help, alongside the road next to the lake. The water was fairly shallow enough, and we could stand up if needed. So my three buddies ran over towards him, trying their best to see what he wanted while I stayed back, near the edge of the lake. Now, this guy was a very large man, and a real sight to behold. We were young and dumb, like I said. We probably could have taken him if need be, but it didn't. He had been running through the woods, sticking to the edge of the lake, trying his best not to get caught, as he made his way towards us. When my friends finally got over there and realized what was going on, they told me afterwards that he looked terrified out of his mind and not coming to assault us. Yeah, 
you already know where this is going. He frantically pleaded with us, asking us if we had seen anything weird coming from the water before, before he was running through the woods. We looked at each other a bit confused. We were confused and had no idea what he meant. Shrugged it off. I mean, we were just high school kids. We had no idea what was even possible to come from the water, let alone having seen anything like what he was saying. So we honestly just told him no, and asked him why. He stopped for a moment, catching his breath as he panted heavily under his large frame while staring down at the road where he came from. He spoke again, and all of us could feel the very air being sucked out from around us, and every hair on our necks stand up with goosebumps, forming across our flesh, listening to the words none of us would have ever thought to hear. The guy said in between breaths, I were running through the woods when I saw it, this thing coming up out of the water, just coming right at me. It had huge black eyes and a large black frame, scaly, these long spiked fins along its back. This thing was unlike anything I've ever seen before. It was alien. It looked like the creature from the Black Lagoon. I thought it was a prank, but there's no way this could have been one. Hearing these words, I thought he was pranking us, but seeing him get so worked up and emotional, you could tell he was reliving this horrifying experience. Thinking about what he said, seeing this thing had before he swallowed hard, as if trying to force down every bit of fear he felt inside, while letting out one last deep breath. He told us how it wasn't more than 20 feet away from him, where the three of us stood now, and with more conviction in his voice than ever before. We could tell by the look on his face, he truly believed every word coming out of his mouth. We just stood there in silence for a good while, nobody really knowing what to say. I'm sure you know what we were thinking, too. We wanted him to think we believed him, so we could get rid of him and just go on swimming like nothing happened. Because, honestly, this seemed so weird. Who would believe this? In my head, I just assumed this guy was having some sort of manic mental breakdown or something. Some hallucination. I mean, it sounded ridiculous, telling us such wild stories. None of us bothered to ask if he had been drinking or something, but we didn't smell any booze on him. Still in shock by what he told us, and feeling utterly petrified, no less, my friends and I just let him be, and went back to enjoying our time together near the lake, as nothing had happened at all. We were all still surprised at how this guy had appeared out of nowhere, and told us such stories about what he saw, coming from the water, and running away in terror. You know, none of us really wanted to admit to ourselves that we actually believed him. At least I didn't, but my friends would later tell me. I think deep down inside, we all knew that his words weren't just lies being passed off. If they were, he was the world's best actor. Now, that evening was uneventful, Aside from one thing, which I'm sure you've already guessed, there was a noise again, like there had been the previous night. Except this time, it wasn't just coming from one place. It sounded as if the whole lake itself was alive, wailing sounds through the entire depth. And it lasted for maybe 12 minutes. Then everything was finally quiet, as if nothing bad had happened. Now this freaked us all out. Either there was some sort of paranormal thing happening, or something. The next day, we all decided to gather at the lake. Smart, right? Because something was obviously going on. Now we were seriously creeped out. First the guy seeing this strange creature out of the water, and then the next this horrifying screaming from the lake. We couldn't make sense out of what was happening. I mean, we weren't even sure where to even start. I feel like we should have called the Scooby-Doo gang on us. But eventually, our gut got the better of us, and we finally came clean with one another in the midst of all this about believing the man. Because honestly now, we had no reasonable explanation for what had just been going on here. While we never saw a sea monster quite yet, we experienced the screaming, which was strange. 
So a following night, we're back yet again at the lake, with some other friends who had come to see what was going on. Now, we were all terrified to get in the water. We all told them about our tall tale, friend, and his stories. But we didn't mention anything about this monster, not wanting to give any of us more reason to freak out than necessary. It only took a few minutes, though, before we began hearing noises coming from the same direction that we'll call the man Ryan said he'd heard it from in the first place. It sounded like something big was moving around. Now, we were all scared, and I felt myself growing pale, looking around to see if there could have been any explanation. In fear, none of us were able to say a word. We all kind of whisper panicked, asking one another if they hadn't just heard that too, or what it was. Once again, we were looking everywhere, but there wasn't any sign of anything out there in the water, or along the edge where it was lapping against the shore. Eventually, we decided to just play it safe. This part is still so vivid in my memory, as if it happened only yesterday. We heard some rustling next to us, and we all looked, and we could see this large shape moving toward us in the dark, in the woods. Something large, something dark, moving in the same direction that Ryan had told us about a few nights previous. It appeared to be big and standing upright like a large man. This was enough for us. We all panicked, and for whatever reason, we decided to run, to flee. Now, we had never saw that other man anymore who we called Ryan, but we weren't going to tolerate this any longer. We tried and tried to play the investigator game, but to no luck. This lake was obviously haunted or something. Some sort of crazy paranormal thing going on about it. Between the screaming and the strange noises and the feelings and this thing now watching us. I couldn't figure out what was going on. For several nights now, this had been going on. And this was more than enough for us. I'm a nature photographer. At least, that's my hobby. Nothing thrills me more than capturing the beauty of wildlife on camera. Like I said, it's mainly a hobby, but I try and take every professional opportunity I can. For example, entering contests. You could win big money, and that all goes towards upgrading my equipment. Since, if you know anything about photography, well, it's a very expensive hobby. This was the reason I was out in a small boat off the coast of Maine, hoping to capture some whale pictures. It was just me and this older guy I'd chartered the boat from, who looked to be about 100 years old. He didn't talk much, but that was fine. I kind of enjoyed the quiet, honestly, all so I could concentrate better. He looked like some oldie time mariner, and said to call him Captain. He'd been coming out here for decades and knew the best spots, We'd been out for a couple hours already, when I began to notice something odd. I've seen many unusual abnormalities in nature over the years. You don't necessarily need to believe in monsters once you've seen deformed calves or two-headed piglets. There's so many unusual and freakish creatures in the wild, without needing to invent things to fit for a horror movie. I had already gotten some great pictures, when I noticed a trail in the water... It looked like blood, and I wondered if there might be a shark. When people think of Maine, they conjure up whales and of course lobsters, but there are a lot of sharks. The captain had a gun with him, just in case, but I couldn't see the telltale fin sticking out of the water, and there didn't seem to be the usual mad panic when the other sea life senses a large predator. Then. I caught a flash of an unusual looking tail splash out of the water. It was unusual because it appeared rotten and skeletal, if that makes any sense. Reminded me of a cartoon fish bone, and the trail of blood was all around it. The captain didn't even seem remotely phased, but then he didn't seem to have any sort of facial expression at all, besides mono. Maybe he'd seen this before. I tried to ask him, 
but he just grunted. Then, all of a sudden, there was a loud bang against the side of the boat, and I clearly saw more of the tail, which was just a rotten looking and bony as the tip of it. That had seemed to have gotten the captain's attention, as now, he made a conscious effort to steer the boat in a different direction. I was trying to take as many photos as I could. Have you ever seen that Disney movie about the mermaid? Well, whoever drew the main character, thank God they hadn't seen one of these, or it would have never been a family-friendly movie. In the water beside us was the most grotesque creature that I had ever laid my eyes on, from land or sea. It, and I will say it, rather than she or he, was I refused to liken this hideous thing. It leered out of the water, scratching at the side of the boat. In that full moment, I got a good view of just how truly ugly, grotesque, and revolting it was. What had looked like fin rot covered the entire body. A long, thin, bony tail covered in what appeared to be rotting meat with bits of its skin and what had looked like fin rot, scales flapping as if they would fall off. It honestly reminded me of a rotting fish. The tail ended around the waist and gave way to an equally skeletal body again, covered in what looked like diseased skin. I couldn't really exactly tell what it was. It looked kind of humanoid. Flapping skin, rotting skin I should say with visible bones, and it had long, long, thin arms, with overly large hands. They were more like talons, or dagger-like claws. And all of this, if not ready, was topped with a head that appeared to be a very grotesque-looking skull. I mean, it wasn't a human skull. It was part animal, but I can't exactly make out. It had a grotesque-looking snout, and all sorts of nasty little details. I didn't see any eyes in the sockets. They were just two empty black holes. But it did have a huge maw filled with razor sharp looking teeth. Since I'm writing this to you, to share and to warn people of the dangers, I guess you can say what happened next. I was terrified, and as I believe I have every right to be, my grip on my camera lessened and I lost my camera into the water. Down it went. There's a thousand dollars I'm out of. Once I'd managed to get up, I looked over the side, but the creature and of course my camera were now gone. I yelled at the captain that we needed to get back. Without hesitating further, we shot back to shore without saying anything. I was pretty shaken up by the whole thing, and of course really upset and utterly pissed about losing my thousand dollar camera. Getting off the boat, the captain just looked at me and shook his head. You never hang about if you see one of them. Anyway, that's my experience with what I would call a merfolk, but I don't even know if that's exactly what I saw. The captain, as I said, seemed totally unfazed and would not even talk about it. What happened out there on the boat? I have no idea but part of me believes it was some paranormal supernatural experience. Something from hell or the dead came to visit our boat. As for my camera, well, it took a little while, but I finally was able to replace it. I live on the coast in Cornwall in the UK. It is a place of beauty and something I have never taken for granted. In fact, one of my favorite things to do is to take a long walk along the beach, especially early morning before the crowds begin to arrive. The sounds of the ocean is incredibly peaceful and gives this overwhelming sense of calm. Even if the waves are lashing, it still makes me feel good. In fact, sometimes when the sky is dark and the rain is hammering down and the waves are angry, and those are my favorite times. And it was during one of these storms that I saw something very unusual in the water. I almost didn't go out. The rain was that heavy. But something drew me to the sea that morning. And because it was so early, 
I knew I could get home and have a hot shower before heading off to work. So I went. It was early and so wet that I could hardly see. The rain pelting against my skin in a way that it hurts. I remember thinking to myself that I must be mad. Yet I felt strangely compelled to carry on. It was almost like there was this voice in my head. You must continue with this walk. Fighting against the rain and barely being able to see where the weather stopped and the sea began. I saw something moving in the water. Due to the visibility being nearly at zero, it was incredibly hard to determine what it was. But I saw that it was moving, and I knew whatever it was was alive, and large, and ultimately shouldn't be there. I didn't get a really good look at it. It was impossible, and maybe that's what it wanted. All I can make out was a mass of what appeared to be tentacles, dozens and dozens of them, all writhing and bobbing up and down and out of the waves. It would be hard to say what color they were, but they did stand out clearly from the water, a dark, muddy sort of hue. I don't know if it made a noise. There's no way I could have heard anything over the rain and crashing waves. I stood there, mesmerized for several minutes. It reminded me in a way of a pit of snakes. Then, they just seemed to slither back away into the sea. As soon as they had retreated, I almost seemed to snap out of whatever weird daze I had been in, and literally ran home to get these sodden clothes warmed up. Even after a shower warm enough to scold my skin, I couldn't get warm. I just shivered the entire day, and the rain kept coming. Then, sometimes after work, the rain just stopped. One second, thrashing down in sheets. The next, nothing. I immediately warmed up after that. So much that I had to start ripping off many layers I'd worn, just to try and get some heat. The whole experience was just really weird. I don't know what I saw in the sea, but even more so, I don't know how it seemed to hold some sort of power over me. It was a very, very weird experience. Very strange. Perhaps the strangest I'd ever experienced. I work as a sea fisherman catching various produce for a very large supermarket chain, and it isn't uncommon to find something other than fish in my net. I get all sorts of surprises, more and more nowadays. I guess it just shows all the stuff people dump in the sea does not just float to the bottom or rot away. What a shocker, I know. I often bring this extra stuff home and post photos on social media, a sort of look-what-you've-done post. I don't know if it makes any difference, but I try to do my bit. I'm not writing this to you to be eco-friendly. I want to tell you, and hopefully your listeners, about the thing that got away. It was one of those regular working days where you're just on autopilot. You've been doing the job for so long. Many of you know what I'm talking about. Those who have jobs and careers that every day is pretty much the same old, same old. Mundane, drawn out. You almost don't even need to concentrate. Your body knows the patterns of what exactly to do. As soon as I was heaving the nets in and out with the day's catch, I almost failed to notice my potential stowaway. Alongside all the garbage that turns up, again, it isn't unusual to get a visitor I only catch fish, other guys handle the crustaceans. So, if I pick up a lobster, crab, squid, he goes back into the sea. Sometimes though, I have catch a weird looking thing. I truly believe we have no idea what lives in the vast oceans, and there are hundreds, if not thousands of species, we'll probably never discover. And just maybe, it was one of those that I caught that day, 
it would also be fitting to have come from any sci-fi or alien movie. So as I was emptying out the net, I saw something shoot out and scuttle across the boat. My first thought didn't go to alien, sea monster. I thought it must be a crab or lobster. I'd only had a fleeting glance as it shot off, but I did notice it left a sludgy black trail. It might be ink, I thought, or maybe a kind of squid. Whatever it was, it needed to go back into the ocean. I followed the trail over to the very darkest corner of the boat, and I could see it had several eyes looking at me. I was genuinely curious at this point. I called to it, hoping it would respond to me. If anybody had seen it, I'm not sure if it would have looked like a scene from a horror movie. This thing leapt out, tried to attach itself to me, and I managed to grapple it just in time. The best way to describe it is it looked somewhat like a giant scorpion-esque lobster-type crab with too many eyes and nasty vicious pinchers and a really long stinging tail. It opened its mouth like a sandworm and its head almost disappeared as the mouth was so wide and it screamed and I threw it back into the sea. That description doesn't do it justice but it's the best I can do. It also left some of that black sludge all down me, and I spent the next few days violently throwing up. I honestly think that it had some kind of low dosage poison in its system. I don't know what it was, but if I get another in my net, I'm quitting. My parents own a pretty good chunk of property, large enough to include a small lake. I had been expressly forbidden to never go near the lake without any adult supervision. So, as a kid, you can imagine I was always itching to go near that body of water. That's not there was a lack of water for me to go near. There was actually a pond not that far away, and for whatever reason, there was no problem with me visiting the pond, but there would be fireworks and hell to pay. I never quite figured out the logic. The simple fact that it was forbidden was that it made it more inviting. As it often happens with many kids, I'm outside, unsupervised, and I got the idea to go take a visit. What my parents didn't know wouldn't hurt them. It wasn't like it was one of those places where you get a bad feeling just by being there. It was a very beautiful pond, and that particular day, the sun was shining. The weather gorgeous made it all the more inviting. That's when I noticed something that I had never noticed before. A short distance into the lake was what looked like a segment of a pier or a dock, as if there was somebody had taken the pier apart, but failed to get one last segment of it that was out in the water. It was close enough that I would be able to swim to it. I was 11 years old, and I was a capable swimmer. I figured I was old enough to prove that I wasn't in any danger by being in or near the lake. I mean, I wasn't a baby anymore. I took off my clothes, jumped in the water, and I swam over to the small island of planks, being held up by heavy logs that reached far down into the water. I climbed up on the top, sat there, proud of myself, like any 11-year-old is of such a small feat. If only my parents could see me now, I thought, they would realize how grown up I am and that I'm not just a little boy. My moment of triumph, though, was interrupted by movement next to the lake shore. I want to say that I saw somebody, but the whole way it carried itself made it some thing. I mean... It had the overall shape of a man, albeit a very tall one, but there was something about the way it moved that seemed feral, almost like it was wearing clothes of some kind. The face was difficult for me to see. I couldn't see light reflecting off eyes. I couldn't see a nose or mouth. It appeared slightly hunched at the shoulders, making it look like it was skulking even when it wasn't. 
it came to the water, and it began to wade out into it. Then the water went up to this thing's neck, and then it completely submerged. That was the last I had seen of it, but for some reason, it had completely scared me out of my wits. I was afraid to even move, let alone breathe. Quite a bit of time passed, and I was beginning to wonder if the thing was ever going to come for me, because it surely would have reached me by then, if I was the reason it got in the water. Plus, my bladder was getting full, and suddenly, I heard angry shouting. My father. He was livid. He was throwing a bright orange raft onto the surface of the water and paddling out to get me. I jumped in the raft, deciding it was better than being in the water where I didn't know where that boogeyman was. My dad, not speaking a word, which is what he does when he is absolutely at his wit's end of anger. I knew I had it in. So, we silently paddled back to shore, and I looked back at the pier, and I thought the color drained from my face as I saw the head of that creature was poking up out of the water, just under the pier. It had been waiting for me the whole time, and in that moment, I understood why I was never allowed near the water. And after that incident, I never went there again, not even in my adult life. I got grounded for a long time after that, and when I asked my dad about it, if he had seen the thing, he wouldn't even acknowledge it, like he knew, but didn't want to bring it into reality. My mother played dumb about it too. Even to this day, I'm well into my 30s and both refuse to even acknowledge or talk about it. Very strange. I'm from Illinois, and if you are from the same place, then you know that the city I'm in is home to two exceptionally large industrial processing plants. They manufacture soy and vitamin E. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention them by name or not. I work at one of those two places, and a number of the people in my family do as well, because where else can you get paid that kind of money, not knowing how to do anything? Push a broom? roll a paintbrush, don't get crushed, burned, impaled, or eaten. You don't know about things that can eat you unless you actually work at those places. Think about it. When you have places that separate vitamin E from other nutrients, it's impossible for them to capture all of it. Some of it goes out in the runoff, since it's environmentally safe, because after all, it's just food and vitamins. Well, Unbeknownst to the casual outsider, there are rats and catfish that have nothing to do all day but eat that same runoff. They have no predators inside the facilities. So what do you think is going to happen to an animal that has no need to take shelter from predators and an endless supply of nutrient-densely packed food? They're going to increase in size. If this story makes it on air, I wholeheartedly challenge your listeners to fact check the same story. My dad worked at one of these facilities before I did. He said that he and three of his coworkers were down by one of the lagoons when one of them accidentally dropped a torch in the water. As deep as their pockets are, you don't just go losing expensive equipment like that. Not if you're planning on a long-term career. The guilty part waded out into the water and found that it was deeper than he expected. Now you can imagine how foul the water must be, considering the state of the air when you go over the bridge over the entire facility. My dad's co-worker was facing the prospect of having to go under the water to get the torch. Here's where everything happened quickly. The guy steeled himself, held his breath, went underwater. My dad glimpsed something dark and slick and shiny with a long fin on its back, crest the water for just a moment. There was a brief disturbance in the water, and then it was over with. The guy never came back up. Dad and the other guy raised hell over it. But this is a corporation with incredibly deep pockets, 
which is why it's very dangerous to work here. There is no fine steep enough to force them into implementing any major safety programs. When something happens to one of their workers, they just reach into said deep pockets, pay off any fines or lawsuits or anything else, and they bring in another warm body from the stack of applications of people who want to make decent money with literal no experience. I know that sounds like a bad plot to a science fiction movie, but honestly, it's the cold hard truth. They covered over the missing man's grave with money, just like they do with everyone else that suddenly isn't there anymore. My dad also swears up and down that for years afterwards, if he paid close enough attention, he would see a catfish the size of a shark in the lagoon. He never saw it completely exposed, but he always saw parts of it or evidence of its presence. And it wasn't exactly small. Encounters with rats the size of large cats are a common experience out there. So it's not far-fetched to say there's one if not more catfish that are more than capable of swallowing a grown man. If you don't believe me, you are more than welcome to come out here and see for yourself. I lived in a small town that had a lake at the very edge of it. The lake was just about as big as the town. That either says something about how small the town was or how big the lake was. Anyway, by the time I was 13 years old, I had a girlfriend that I spent just about every spare minute with that I could. My parents were more on the strict side, so they frowned on me spending any time with my girlfriend alone. After all, we never got into any real trouble. Any time that we actually had alone time, it was out in public. An expedition to the mysterious lake at the edge of town was just the right excuse to go for a nice long walk with my girlfriend and our chaperone, Dell, the Border Collie. We kept our eyes out for any signs that would say something like no trespassing or private property. But we didn't see anything. We didn't have any reservations about exploring. The waters are pretty still, with the exception of fish that would dart away when they see you. One of them was an exception. It lay there in the shallow waters, thrashing. It got my curiosity up, and I wondered if it was injured. It didn't look like any fish that I was used to seeing. It seemed to have a long body, and a peculiar pinkish-blue color with shallow veins. Even in the daylight, I could tell that it had a few highlights of bioluminescence. I looked to see if maybe it was wrestling with some kind of parasite that had latched itself onto it, asking my girlfriend to find a stick so I could try to help it along. But it was when my girlfriend actually approached with the stick that Dell suddenly went berserk and she put herself between us and this thrashing fish. She barked at it with all the fury I had never seen in her before. I tried to edge past her, but she refused to let me in. She even began lunging at this strange fish in the water, as if she were trying to intimidate it going away, which of course it wasn't. Then, she couldn't help herself. She attacked it. The minute she connected with it, something I can only describe as a giant leech coming up out of the water and totally enveloping my dog whole. The muscles on its body began crushing my dog, and the disturbing, traumatic sound of crunching bones, along with her muffled whimpers under this thing's flesh, crushing my sanity along with her body. The thrashing fish must have had some kind of organ that performed a similar function to that of an angler's fish lore. Look, it's hard for me to talk about. Part of me died that day. I had never seen or heard anything more horrible than what that thing had done to my dog before in my life. It's still something I don't really like to dwell on. My dog died a horrible death, and I had to see it. It was like watching something out of a horror movie, except this wasn't a horror movie. This was real life.
Hey, I've been wanting to reach out to you for a little while now, but now that I have some free time, I can finally sit down and write out to you. I used to have a friend who passed away about seven years ago from a really bad car accident, hit a semi-truck. God rest his soul. This man used to do all sorts of water sports, diving, fishing. The man lived in the water. He was kind of a freak, but I mean that in the best and loving way. I grew up close with him, so he was like a brother to me. The man loved to fish and even was training to do Olympic style swimming. If my memory serves me correctly, he had even done some stints back in the 90s and early 2000s to where he swam 50 plus miles or something like that. I could be wrong on that, but it was something crazy, I do know that. Well, he was also known to my family and circle of friends for his diving that he would do. He was a huge fan of looking for wrecks and things like that. Old wreckage just really excited him. He had gone diving off the coast of California, New York, Maine, Florida, Texas, you name it, and even spent quite a bit of time in the Gulf. Since I'm not a diver, I don't know what goes into it professionally, the skills you need or the equipment. But from being good friends with him and being very close, I know he was very good at it. When we would catch up on the phone and have talks, he would go on and on and tell me about some of the amazing diving adventures that he would have had and some amazing things that he would discover. Now, I've been a watcher of your channel for over a year now, and I see that just very recently, you started covering a topic about deep sea related things, and I thought, what a perfect opportunity for me to share with you his stories. The first story I'm gonna share with you was back in 2010 when he was wreck diving in Lake Superior, north of Wisconsin, but closer to the eastern border of North Dakota. He had gone diving with two other close individuals, one of who was seriously hospitalized during this incident. Luckily, him and his other friend remained unscathed. The story goes that they dove down there looking for wreckage of any kind, and they thought they had spotted some. But that's when one of the friends discovered what appeared to be a large transparent blob-like figure floating in the water. This blob-like figure was around eight to nine feet tall, and probably about 12 feet in width from what he told me. A giant massive bulb of a blob. It was opaque and off-white in color. It didn't really move like a jellyfish or a jellyfish-like being like you would probably think. He explained it was kind of floating in the water. Well, the one friend who swam close to it to observe it better at a closer distance started experiencing severe third degree burns all over his body minus the backside, just the front side to where he became exposed to this. He swam close and he began screaming and had to ascend back up to the boat, where my friend and his friends followed after him. Going back up to the boat, all three of them, he took off his wetsuit and discovered his skin on the front of his torso, face and arms were literally boiling and nearly falling off. He had to be life flighted to a hospital to where he experienced severe skin grafts. I wasn't told every single detail, but that's what he explained to me. He also got severe nitrogen poisoning because he ascended so quickly. That story alone freaked me out, and I asked him what he thinks it was. They were probably about 70 feet down, and as you know, there's not a whole lot of light. So they were using the lights that they had with them, and as he got close, the friend of course started immediately experiencing this sort of pain sensation. After the person got out of the hospital, he said it was like a severe chemical burn and not like a fire burn. It was the strong searing pain all over his flesh. He did not receive burns on his backside, only his skin that was closest to this blob. He got probably within 20 feet of it and from what my friend who passed away told me. It's safe to say that their wreckage diving was cut short that day. They never did tell anybody what exactly happened or what they saw out of fear that they'd be accused of attempted murder. Again, nobody has any idea what it was or what it could have been. I speculated with him that it could have been some sort of jellyfish or man -o war but he's gone diving in the ocean so many times, he knows what both of those creatures look like very well. This looked nothing like neither of them, 
and there were no visible tentacles anywhere near this blob figure. There was no indication from the water temperature that it emitted light or any sort of heat. My friend, the one who passed away, came to the ultimate conclusion, which is just a wild guess, but the best guess in my opinion, was that it was indeed giving off severe amounts of radiation. It's the only explanation that he can come up with that would actually answer it, but it doesn't fully make 100% sense. It's still just a mystery. Another time, he was also wreck diving off the coast of Maine with a larger crew of people. I don't recall how many miles he was off the coast, but I know it was somewhat significant. I think they actually had a particular wreck they were looking for, but I might be wrong on that. He mentioned to me that somewhere down near the bottom, as they were scouting, an amphibious type of hand, many times larger than his own, reached out from underneath the sand and silt and grabbed onto his wetsuit, nearly tearing it open with so much force. The creature swam out of the silt and away from him. He described it as very mermaid looking, but not in a fantasy or traditional sense that we all think. He described it as a more humanoid, half-man, half-fish sense. Described the face as very humanoid looking, with large black eyes and large scaly hands with webbing in between the fingers. It had a strange purple oozing bruise on his leg, and it gripped him so hard. When they had gotten out of the water, he had this weird plasma-like goop all over his leg where it grabbed him. It freaked out all the other divers because it was so sudden and out of nowhere. After it grabbed onto him, it pulled itself out of the silt and swam away in the opposite direction. He said it was a very large creature and estimated it to be between 13 and 16 feet in length and described the upper body being very humanoid looking, but also very amphibious. The bottom half was just like an elongated fish body with a long tail. This is why and where he used the term mermaid. Yet another dive ended prematurely. Even with these strange events, these things have not stopped him from going out practically living in the water. This man has also been face to face with barracuda, sharks, and a bunch of other extremely dangerous situations underneath the water. There is even one time where he accelerated too quickly, just like his other friend, and nearly died of nitrogen poisoning back when he was just a rookie diver. Yet, he's taken out by a semi-truck in the winter. It was a tragedy. We all figured he would have gone out either drowning or being eaten alive, but that's not what his final chapter looked like. The fact of the matter is no matter what situation he found himself in, life-threatening or not, he still pursued the thrill of the deep water. I think Rex scavenging was probably his number one pastime, among other things. Of course, he too also had stories, because he had some close friends who were in the Navy and other parts of the military that had some kind of classified information from what I was explained to. One of my favorite stories of his that he tells me is that his one longtime Navy friend, who he concealed the identity of because he didn't want any information to be revealed about this particular individual. This individual was sailing in the South Pacific back in the early 80s on a smaller military boat when an extremely large object appeared on the radar machinery. At first glance, they all thought it should be an opposing submarine, but realized it was actually a bio-life form. Whatever it was, was estimated to be anywhere between 90 feet to 150 feet in length, and was also several miles down under the water. Or, there's another similar situation, where back in the late 70s, they had an entire submarine and crew perish due to being attacked by some unknown large creature. Whatever it was had to have been large enough to take down a military tier submarine in the Pacific Ocean. Over 80 crew and 11 officers all perished with the submarine. The assailant of the submarine was never made known, but it was documented that there was indeed a struggle, and the submarine fired off all of its missiles against the unknown assailant, but made no luck. This was, from what I've been told, about 200 miles southwest off the coast of Alaska. I've also heard stories from several places where military personnel have talked about finding washed up half-eaten whale carcasses with humongous bites taken out of them. These whale carcasses were partially devoured or halfway devoured. These have been usually found in the areas that military personnel were deployed close by. 
The one that comes to my mind is a story where an individual, a different one, a sergeant, whose name I will not mention, encountered three of these dead whales at once that had washed up right near an undisclosed military base. All three of them showed the same signs of being partially eaten, devoured by the same large predator. This predator had taken out chunks of meat so large and massive in its bite that the bite marks dwarfed that of a great white shark in comparison. It's stories like that that will keep me out of the ocean. These kinds of sightings were actually far more common than you can imagine. The military has all sorts of reports on large water amphibians and reptilians that are classified, apparently. For example, if you Google this, there is a case back in 1914, I believe, I might be unsure of the year, of a large military ship seeing a large water crocodile that was estimated to be around 60 feet in length. I can't remember where, and I want to say it was off the Europe coast, but you can find out. This information was kept from the public for quite some time, but all it takes is for you to know somebody who knows somebody. Unfortunately, once my friend passed, all of his connections who knew stuff and had stories were severed with his death. He had good friends in many places, but fortunately, he was able to tell me a lot of them before he died. He and I would just sit down and spend hours talking over the phone, or if we were in person, have a few beers and just talk and talk, and he would tell me story after story. Not always creature stuff, but situations he was in where he almost died, or incredible diving stories. I just thought you would find these two particular cases I shared with you interesting, since it fit right up your alley. Being in the Navy, you get to see a lot of the world. And with two deployments currently under my belt, I have seen a lot of crazy things. However, this occurred during my last deployment, and it's a moment that I will never forget. Not just due to the fact that it left me physically shaken, but there was no explanation for what we saw that night. For security and privacy reasons, I will not be discussing the name or type of ship that I was stationed on. I hope you all can understand. I had watched from midnight to four in the morning, and my watch station is in a little area right behind the bridge. In this area, I was the supervisor of a small team of four others, making sure that they did their job properly, which was to make sure that we knew what other ships are out there, who they are, and where they come from. The midnight watch is usually pretty boring, as nothing really happens around that time. The bridge team tends to keep to themselves around that time, and only come to bug us when they have questions about a ship or any possible ships in the area. We had one person out on the bridge though, to talk to the lookouts, which are people stationed around the ship that made visual reports to the bridge on the other ships, or any marine life that could be near us. To ensure that I knew what the lookouts were reporting, I had a speaker hooked up to the station that the lookouts used to talk to each other and make reports. Usually during this time, the lookouts like to talk about nonsense and gossip amongst each other. I will admit, a lot of their conversations were funny. On this particular night, however, one of the lookouts made a report to the bridge and I knew something was wrong because she sounded extremely nervous. Here is the initial report. Bridge, Port Fantel. Go ahead, Port Fantel. Bridge, the water behind us is glowing. Say again? I can't explain it in any other way, but the water is glowing. What? I said to myself as I went out onto the bridge and talked to my guy out there, making sure he heard what I had heard as well. We both reported it to the junior officer of the watch, and he thought it was weird as well but claimed that it might be a bioluminescent algae, which, although extremely common, it made sense at the time. I told my guy to pass the word back to the lookout in hopes it would calm her down. As I walked back to my station, I heard the lookouts talking to the speaker, teasing and making fun about how her reporting of a glowing algae. After that, all seemed normal. About 20 minutes later, I heard the lookout come out again, 
this time talking to one of the other lookouts. Starboard Fantel. Port Fantel. Yeah. Do you see the water glowing in the distance? Yeah, what about it? I think it's following us. You're stupid. No, seriously. Look at it. We passed it about 20 minutes ago. We shouldn't be able to see it anymore. You're either really tired or really paranoid. You need to calm down. After that, the lookout again reported it to the bridge. And this time, the junior officer of watch told him to pass word to inform him when the glowing algae got closer. I went outside to check myself, and I did indeed see it. Although it could be nothing, I was a bit on edge also. Then, out of nowhere, I visually see the glow rapidly get closer to the ship, coming in from behind. I ran back inside and I heard the lookouts making the report, but before I could inform the bridge, the water around the ship started to glow. The glowing faded slowly, then got brighter every few seconds, and everyone on the bridge was completely dumbfounded. No one moved or spoke, just stood in place, watching as the bridge filled in and out with an ominous green glow. This went on for a couple of minutes, but felt like an eternity. I don't know what others were thinking, but I honestly thought that this was the end. We then watched as whatever was glowing beneath the ship slowly move away from us, moving ahead of us. Then, in a sudden flash of light, it was completely gone. Everyone on the bridge remained silent for about another minute, and even though everybody was shaken up, we all tried to get past it, and many went on like it never happened. Since there was no official report of the incident, and since it was never passed down to the other watches, this event technically never happened, except to those who witnessed it, which happens more than you think. The captain was never informed on what happened either. I have not been able to stop thinking about that day, and I haven't told anyone about it. Not even to my wife and family. Not because they won't believe me, but because they worry about me constantly when I'm out at sea. So I kept it to myself until now. I just wanted to share in what my experience was and pass the word that there is something in the ocean. What is it? I don't know. And that truly terrifies me.